the inventors of smartphones couldn't have imagined just how much addiction and dependence these devices would bring. In fact, psychologists today compare smartphone addiction to drug addiction. According to the latest statistics from the Pew Research Center, there are more people in the United States addicted to their smartphones than both alcohol and cigarettes combined. Believe it or not, people are checking their smartphones an average of 58 times a day, spending more than four hours on their devices. Can you imagine just how intensive this is on your life? American footballer Andrew Brown says, the pointless internet is now so big and so powerful that for some people it has become a complete substitute for life. Are you aware that your attention and time are now the most precious commodities in today's economy? Big companies like Facebook and Google earn billions of dollars with the help of these two commodities. They are now worth more than the GDP of many countries in the world. Do you think it is really free to use these platforms? It's not. They operate at your expense, and you are the product. In his book, Digital Minimalism, Cal Newport argues that our addiction to technology is not just a harmless habit, but a serious threat to our personal and professional lives. Digital minimalism is a philosophy that prioritizes intentionality, mindfulness, and purposeful use of technology. Modern technology is designed to exploit our psychological vulnerabilities and keep us hooked to our screens, causing us to sacrifice quality time with loved ones, creative pursuits, and even our mental and physical wellness. Social media is an extremely powerful tool that can have a significant impact on the world, but it can also be very insidious, posing a grave danger to your existence. For these reasons, it is imperative that we practice minimalism. Cal Newport doesn't suggest that you ditch your smartphone and run off into the woods, but rather recommends taking a few steps that will enable you to use these platforms consciously and to your benefit. Doing so allows you to consume the content on these platforms without being consumed by it. So, here I am going to tell five essential steps of this philosophy, which you must follow for optimal usage of your phone. The first step is to understand digital minimalism and your core values. Then I will elaborate on digital decluttering and the three steps it entails. Following that, I would talk about the importance of solitude deprivation. After that, I would tell you the importance of reclaiming leisure. And lastly, my favorite, the practices to rebel and join the attention resistance. Newport asserts that individuals are not enslaved to screens merely due to their idleness, but rather due to the staggering investments made to enforce this outcome. Therefore, it is imperative to take a stand against this pervasive and seemingly invincible technology by comprehending your life's values and necessities clearly. For instance, if you use Facebook to stay in contact with your friends and family, you should never employ it to share political comments or post rants. When you are aware of your true values and needs, you will not mind missing out on those small and fleeting, please me now moments. After all, you will be happier, because you will be living in line with your deepest values. You must test every technology before accepting it as an integral part of your life. It must support your values, and if it does, it must do so in the best way possible. If not, either optimize the technology or abstain from it. Newport states that the digital declutter is about removing the mental and emotional baggage that we carry from the digital world. The best way to do this is to take a 30-day break from the optional technologies in your life. This is about removing those irrelevant apps on your phone that you use when you get bored or have nothing better to do, and then your autopilot mind takes over and you start using them mindlessly for hours. So firstly, you must define your technology rules. Identify the apps, sites, tools, games, etc. that you deem optional. The more you get rid of, the better it will be, as it will give you a cleaner slate to rebuild your connection with technology. It's your declutter, so your rules prevail. 
For many people Netflix may be optional, and for some, it's not. However, ensure that you identify things that provide you with a dopamine rush. The second step is to take a 30-day break from all technology that you consider to be optional, either by completely avoiding it, or adhering to strict rules. The first two weeks are the most challenging, and are similar to the withdrawal phase that comes with quitting drugs or alcohol. During this time, your focus should be on engaging in high-quality non-digital activities that provide joy and satisfaction. If you are able to successfully complete this phase, you will undoubtedly feel amazing. You will feel more in control, less anxious, and more productive. Lastly, after 30 days, you can begin reintroducing some of your optional technologies, but with a more careful approach. For each app or site, ask yourself the following questions. Does it deeply uphold your values? Is it the most effective way to support your values? How can you use it to minimize harm and maximize value? Adhering to the rules you set for yourself is crucial. It will grant you control over your technology and allow you to use it to your advantage. We are all living in a state in which we spend barely any time in solitude with our own thoughts. Newport mentions an American president who went away from the White House to the forest for reflection every time he had to make significant decisions in crucial moments. This benefited him in thinking clearly and logically about the issue, allowing him to make the correct decision with confidence. Too frequently, when bored or alone, people default to low-quality leisure activities, like engaging in mobile games, checking texts, and scrolling through feeds mindlessly. These are low-value activities, because they lack intention. You should avoid them by seeking out solitude, initiating with leaving your phone at home, taking long walks, and writing letters or journals to gain more comfort in solitude. If you wish to triumph with digital minimalism, you must face the truth that removing some technologies from your life will create a void. Therefore, Newport advises replacing that void with leisure activities of high quality that contribute to your well-being, gratification, and inner happiness. The majority of individuals fail to develop lives overflowing with high-quality leisure. A life lived virtuously requires activities that serve no other purpose than the satisfaction that the activity itself produces. Therefore, it is vital to embrace endeavors that provide a fountain of inner joy. The final practice for digital minimalists is to rebel against falling victim to the attention economy. The attention economy is a profit-driven sector that collects individuals' attention and repackages it for marketers and data collectors. Purposeful use of technology is the sole means of avoiding the repercussions that come with the attention economy. Choose how you want to use technology and stick to it, disabling all the notifications you can for the apps you are using. You will subsequently see how this will change your phone usage. To resist the influences of the digital attention economy at a greater level, Newport has suggested five practices. Delete social media from your phone. Turn your devices into single-purpose computers, like keeping separate devices for work and personal business. Using social media like a professional, for only interacting in meaningful ways that contribute to a goal, not mindlessly scrolling or clicking like. Embrace slow media-like books, newspapers, and podcasts. And dumb down your smartphone, try using it for talking only. I hope you find this useful and will implement it in your life. Subscribe to the channel, and join the Rebel Army for more such videos.